didn't get exactly right. We're not quite sure why. I'm expecting it, so let's just bring it on. Cadence? Um, would a G uh -huh. make it one for the X? Not sure how you got negative five. <coughs> All right, let's run through it real quick. So negative one. Remember that slow is smooth. As smooth is what? Fast. Fast. It's faster to do it smoothly, meaning with no mistakes, than it is to go through it quickly, make mistakes, fix those mistakes, come around the second time. All right, so take it slow, make sure it's smooth, and you'll be there quickly. <laughs> Right. So here we have, uh, well, what I'd like to do is to put parentheses and then put the number in there, okay? Especially when that number is negative. But I still do it all the time. But that negative there, we want to keep track of that. So we have a square on a number that's negative. That means we're going to, what does it mean to square a number? Times itself. Times itself. So what number are we going to multiply by itself? Negative one. Negative one, okay? 2 times negative 1 times negative 1. What's negative 1 times negative 1? 1. 1 times 2? Two. 2. Negative times negative is positive. Don't forget that. Uh, 6 times negative 1, positive 6 times negative 1 is? Negative 6. 6 minus 1. OK. So 2 minus 6 is negative 4. Minus 1 is negative 1. Good. Ready? I had a question on the H. The H one? Okay. Maybe you have three. Yeah. I got zero. You got zero instead of four. All right. It's a tricky one. It's got a lot going on here. Okay. It's negative. You got a cube there. Right. Lots to keep track of. So let's be smooth and fast. Okay. So negative three cubed plus four times negative three squared. Plus a negative three, I'm just gonna go ahead and say minus three. Hopefully that doesn't mess anybody up. All right, what does it mean to take a number to the third power? Times itself. Times itself. Times itself, times itself again. So that's negative three times, whoa, times negative three times another negative three. Let's take it one piece at a time. What's negative three times negative three? Nine. Positive nine. Positive nine times negative three. Negative 27. <coughs> 27. So that negative number, when we cubed it, came out negative. Negative 3 squared, we did, uh, well, we, we just did that actually, like right there. That's negative 3 squared. What was negative 3 times negative 3? Nine. 9. So that's 4 times 9. What's 4 times 9? Positive 32. 4 times 9? 36. Oh, 36. 36. Okay. Uh, minus 3. Minus 2, so 36 minus 27, 9? Yeah. Okay. Minus 3, minus 2, so I have a minus 5. It's 4. And it's 4. Hmm. Be careful, like, uh, I'm still seeing people, it's happening less and less, but I still see things like negative 27 plus 36 is, uh, negative 50, 42, right? So just adding the two numbers and throwing the negative on the front, okay? That's basically going out of order, the order of operation, right? So you don't want to do that. Oh, yeah, 62, sorry. That's what uh, the correct wrong answer would be. And three, yeah, maybe 63. Well, all of those are wrong. But it's like the, most, the one, the wrong answer that makes the most sense that somebody might get, 63. Okay, so just careful about that. That comes from, you know, fixing that mistake will happen with smoothness. Take it slow, be smooth. Okay, Cadence? Then H, zero, correct? Plug in zero in for X, to H, plug in zero. H equals zero cubed plus four times zero squared plus zero minus two. What's zero times itself three times? Zero. 
What's zero times itself? Zero. What's zero times four? Zero. Zero. Zero plus zero plus zero minus two. So we just get negative two. Zeros, when we start to use these functions more and more throughout this year, zero is nice to plug in because that's going to be zero, zero, zero. The only thing that's left is anything that's not multiplied by an x, because x is zero in that case. Any other questions? Questions welcome. You guys feel like you got it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, graded your simplifying expressions homework review. That's pretty good. Could be better. So on today's homework review, we're gonna have a little bit of that again. See if we've improved a little bit. Uh, along with some of this stuff. All right. So you ready for that? For that homework review? Okay. As we do this more, you'll just jump right into action. But here's what you need to do. Desk, get a piece of paper out. Remember, don't just rip it out of your three-ring binder and not have a way to hold on to it. The homework reviews you got back today, you should be putting like right behind the notes, maybe. Right, right, just right behind the notes that you took on that day. It follows a nice little sequence: notes, homework, homework review. You get to see your own progress and improvement. Sure, nothing's on your desk except for maybe a calculator. That's a pretty good idea today. A piece of paper, pencil, nothing else. You need a calculator, you need a calculator, not a phone. If you only had a way to lock down your phones to be just calculators. We got an x times an x, that is by definition x squared. So how does that change? Does that change much? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, does it even change this? No. no. Shouldn't, because those are just the, we call the constants, right? Yeah. Collecting up all the ones there. But this is an x squared now, so does it go together with the x's? So it's going to change the x's, and of course we'll have some x squareds. So let's see, we'll just. 
jump over here, negative 10x squared um, plus 3x. I liked the plus negative. That was a good way to not lose track of those negatives. Um, plus a negative 8 plus a negative 6. So you have the negative 10x squared, the 3x, negative 6x, the negative 8, the negative 6. Okay, so negative 10x squared, 3x minus 6x, negative 3x, negative 8 minus 6, negative 14. Be careful about those squares. Make sure when you have an x, multiply by an x, you have an x squared. If you have an x times an x squared, what is x times x squared? x cubed. x cubed. And what is x to the fifth times x to the seventh? Uh, x, x to the twelfth. X, x to the twelfth. This is just x times x times x times x times x. And this is seven x's multiplied together. Seven. And if we multiply those two strings together, we have 12 x's being multiplied together, of course. Right. Any questions about that? Thumbs up, thumbs down? Let's do more than two reactions. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Okay, thumbs up. All right, are we ready to look at the next one? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Here we are, looking at the next one. Uh, well, let's just run through these real quick. Negative 2 squared minus 3 times negative 2 plus 1. So we plug negative 2 in for x, and we see what happens. So we have 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, then we're multiplying it by itself. Minus 3 times negative 2, or Johnny, plus a negative. That's nice. I see the negative times negative a little better now. Plus 1. Uh, negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4 times a 2 is 8. Uh, negative 3 times negative 2 is what? 6. Positive 6. Plus 1. And you have 14, 15. Take out the negative twos, replace them with negative ones. Uh, negative one squared, negative three times negative one, negative one times itself, negative three times negative one. Two times negative one to negative one is gonna be two, because negative one times negative one is positive one. Negative three times negative one is positive three, plus one, five, six. There you go. How about when you plug zero in there? Can you see it without doing any work? Why? Mm -hmm. Blake? Just and why is that Blake? Because uh, 0 times 2 is 0, and uh -huh. 0 times 3 is 0. Right. And what plus you get 0 plus 0 plus 1 is just going to be 1. Okay. Now, I'll just take off the negatives. No change here, right? Positive 1 times positive 1 is yeah. positive 1, just like negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, times 2 is 2. Uh, negative 3 times positive 1 is now a negative 3, so what's a negative 3? So 2 minus 3, negative 1, plus 1, is 0. Okay. Any questions there? How is that thumbs up and thumbs down and thumbs sideways? Okay, sounds good. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do now is talk a little bit more about functions. All right. Just looking at that, uh, actually, on, that, that table of what algebra is, right? We're going to just talk about functions a little bit more. And when we talk about functions, we really are talking about what does this function do? How does it act? What kind of patterns does it have? So let's take out your notes. Okay, get ready here. We are going to use <coughs> those functions from the work. Go from the uh -huh.
back to the beginning, grab that table, just didn't do it for nothing. Take this G function first. By the way, I like how when I was asking if you had any questions or like, oh, for, for the G one, I had this question, and that's, uh, I like that because that's why we don't just say Y equals all this stuff, and, and Y equals and Y equals and Y equals like you might be used to. We use different names so we can call them by their name, which worked perfectly. Everybody was using the function's name. So this function's name is G, okay? So let's talk about a couple of things about functions. Functions are simple things. If I can put something in, in, okay, this is called our input. You guys heard of input before? Yeah, okay, we're in good shape. And we have then what is this thing called? Output. Okay, that's what a function is. It's just this thing that takes input, turns it into output. That output can be interesting, it can be very dull. Okay, I would say this is somewhat interesting. Dull outputs would be like, uh, you always get the same number, like this function. F equals two. What does that equal? What about if x is 7? F still equals 2. Like x has no effect on this function. So the table for this would be kind of dull. 0, 2, or 6, 2, 0, 2, negative 3, 2. So you call it a constant function. You just always get the same thing no matter what. Okay. If we threw an x on there, it would be a little more interesting. We started throwing squares in there, it's even more interesting. Okay. So we're looking at these functions and we're saying, when do I put this in, what do I get out? What kind of patterns can I notice? We can keep track of these inputs and outputs like this. Okay. That tells me that when I plug in negative three, I get negative one. Is there another way that you can keep track of inputs and outputs? That you can see that when you plug in negative three, you get out negative one? I'm sure you have done this before. Maybe you haven't heard it asked this way. If not, I just put that in a hint. Parenthesis, anybody? Yeah? Uh, X, like, um, one point. Mm -hmm. X is the first number that comes to your next. Exactly. G, right? Which we know might all normally call x comma y, x comma g in this case, right? So there's another way, negative two comma negative five. We're just looking at what is the input for that input. What's the output? Okay. Now this next way. This is the way that most people seem to think is terrible for some reason. Not all that terrible. Another way to keep track of these inputs and outputs, and not only uh, keep track of them, but we can look at them, we can guess at inputs like you know, negative two and a half or positive one and a half. We can make guesses at what those outputs would be. And we can see those patterns, and we can see that behavior of a function. All right? So do you guys know what this is? Sean? Graph. Right. Now, just a mathematician's little pet peeve, hair splitting thing. This is not a graph. It's not a graph until you draw a graph. This you could think of as like graph paper or oh. a mathy word for it, Charlie. Is it a coordinate plane? The coordinate plane, exactly. This, these are uh, plane, this is a plane, a flat surface that's. Uh, Organize in such a way that we have coordinates. Okay? It's, there's even in fancier, fancier words. We've got a name and a person in there. Has anybody heard what kind of plane this is? Starts with a C as well. I'm just going to throw it at you. A Cartesian plane. Okay? Named after a guy whose name is Descartes. You can see how it's called the Cartesian. Descartes Cartesian. 
anyway, we had this cool idea where we had two number lines. You guys know about you've known about number lines since you were wee little little ones, right? That's how we talked about numbers to start with. So you got a number line here, and you have a number line here. With those two number lines put perpendicular to each other, we can keep track of functions and how functions act. So we have positive and negative, positive and negative. And then we can plot some of these points, like negative three, negative one. Okay, so this is saying when I plug negative three into this function, I get negative one out of this function. How do I show that on the Cartesian coordinate plane? Alex? Um, you would go left and down. Left three, down one. There is some data. There is uh, information about this function that when negative three goes into the function, negative one comes out of the function. Okay. Uh, negative two, five. Here's negative two. Go to the left two and up five. There's that point. Zero, negative one. No. Um, and I didn't put negative one there. Negative one, negative five. There it is there. Negative one, negative five. Negative one, negative Negative two, negative five, not negative two, positive five. Now that makes sense. Let me get away with that again. Um, one seven. And two nineteen. Now that's way out of here. Like I don't, no, I don't have enough room to put that on this this graph. So, well, just kind of forget about it. Okay. But I do know that if I were to go to the next point in this graph, it'd be way up there, which starts to make me think that if from zero to one, I, I, I see this much vertical change, and from one to two, I see even more vertical change. What if I went to three? Where do you think that point would wind up? Even higher. And higher and higher and higher. The more we plug in bigger numbers for x, by looking at this graph, we start to get the idea that maybe the bigger number I plug in for x, the bigger number I get out for g, right? So to see those patterns, that's what we're interested in. That's why we use graphs, so we can see those patterns. How about if I go in the other direction? Do I, do I, I think that I'm going to get bigger and bigger values for g that direction as well? Or do I think that they're going to get very, very small? Do I think that they're going to level out and just going to like get positive 2 over and over and over? What do you think is going to happen? If I plug in like negative four, negative five, negative six, Joseph? It's going to continue to get smaller and smaller. You think it'll go like into the negatives? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you have negative two, negative five, and negative two, negative six. Oh, yeah. oh, the points are in the wrong place. You? There we go. So Josie thinks that bigger negative numbers or numbers that go more and more negative are going to give us g values that are more and more negative. Anybody think differently? How can we find out? You could test it, but I think it depends on the what your expression or equation, equation you're using. Well, yeah, because but we're using this one. Oh, for that one? Yeah, yeah specifically so. for that one. I think, I think it, yeah, it would, but for other ones, it might not. Definitely, definitely true. Yeah. Other, other functions are going to behave differently. Um, okay, let's test it. Let's let's try, right, if, if Josie's right, and it's like we're going to get more and more negative numbers for G, why don't we just jump out there a few, like to negative 6 or something. Okay, try that. Try negative 6. 
plug negative 6 in for x. See what you get. big to put here on the scale that I created here. I would have to put, make these closer together and I would have fit 35 on there. So what do you think? Do you think Josie's right? Maybe it eventually it'll start to come back down? is how does this thing act? How does it behave? Are there any patterns? Do you see any patterns when looking at the table or looking at the points that we plotted on the graph? Any nice, especially visually, some nice... Yeah, Alex? Well, when you put a negative input, you get... Oh, wait, no worries. No, I don't see a pattern. Yeah. Okay. If you look at the graph, you see the points that we have so far. You see any nice symmetries? No symmetries? Well, yeah. Take it goes it. like this. It goes like this? Yeah. Like kind of, <coughs> it looks like there's a mirror right in the middle here. Right? See this point down here at negative 5? This one also at negative 5? This one at negative one. This one is also at negative one. Okay? So what if I were to go just to the left here and plug in negative four? What do you think I would get if I plugged in negative four, given this symmetry, Sean? Negative one. Well, if this point mirrors this one, and this one mirrors this one, do you think this one has a mirror image? Yeah. yeah. Where would it land? the left right there maybe. So I'm guessing that if I plugged in a negative four, I'd get out a positive seven. Yep. So it seems like. Maybe. Okay. So what I want you to do is take your homework, take those tables, complete it now, right? And put them in the plane. Okay? I don't put them one on top of the other. Three different 
graphs. Okay? So if you look for some patterns and some trees, okay? Make, like, plot the points that we have from the table into a graph. Put this into a graph. Yeah, those, those values, like, in this table, we've done it already, so like one third of your homework is done. Right? Do it for the other two. The one that has an X to the third, the one that just has an X. Okay? Have a good day.